So I'm going to have a go at the seventh codility lesson. Uh, this is in lesson four and it's called Counting Elements. And this task is called Frog River One. So I have 120 minutes to do this task. Uh, I think it's an easy task. But let's get straight into it. Okay, so a small frog wants to get to the other side of a river. The frog is initially located on one bank of the river, position 0, and wants to get to the opposite bank, position x plus 1. Leaves fall from the tree onto the surface of the river. You are given an array A consisting of n integers representing the falling leaves. AK represents the position where one leaf falls at a time, measured in seconds. So K is seconds. The goal is to find the earliest time when the frog can jump from one side of the river to the other. The frog can cross only when leaves appear at every position across the river from 1 to X. We want to find the earliest moment when all the positions from 1 to X are covered by leaves. You may assume that the speed of the current river is negligibly small. Speed of the current in the river is negligibly small. Either the leaves do not change their positions once they fall in the river. <laughs> it's quite an imaginative way of saying um, that we have a river of certain width and we want to wait until we've got all the numbers from 1 to that width, I think. So, you're given the array x equals 5, an array such as this. In second 6, a leaf falls into position 5, and that's the earliest time when we can cross the river. So, at position 6, we've received 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's 5. So, really, we're given x is the number at the width of the river and we need to report the index of the array at the point when we've received every value from 1 to x. So write a function that given a non-empty array a consists of n integers and x returns the earliest time when the frog can jump from one side of the other. If the frog is never able to jump to the other side of the river, the function should return minus 1. For example, given this array from before, the function should return 6. So here's our method signature. So let's do this in Eclipse. So I'm just going to put the test data in. Uh, so we want x is 5 and this is the array. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is create a hash set of all the values from 1 to x. Let me just check the limits of things. Right, there's a bit more to this. Uh, write an efficient algorithm for the following assumptions. n and x are within 1 and 100,000. Each element of the array is between 1 and x. So n and x between 1 and 100,000. I think it's going to be efficient to just create a hash set with every value between 1 and x. And then loop through the array once, removing the values from the hash set until the hash set is empty. 
and then return the index. So this is how it's going to work. Hash set of integers. And for I from one I is less than or equal to x plus plus we'll stick that value in the hash set. So there we've created a list of numbers in a hash set, every number from in this example from when x is five we've added one, two, three, four, five to the hash set. And then I'm gonna loop through the array from i equals zero, i is less than a dot length, i plus plus. We're gonna get the value and remove it from the hash set. Now, if the there is no value if the value is not in the hash set, it will just return false, but it doesn't matter whether it's in there or not. Actually, a slight efficiency thing would be to say if it is in there, but that's only going to save us. Oh, well, no, I'll do it. If, if we remove the value in the array at position I from the hash set, then we'll check if HS is empty. Then we've put a leaf at every location along the river and the frog can jump and the index of the array is I. If we don't remove it, just carry on. And if we get to the end of the method, return minus one. Now, I think that that's pretty straightforward save that and see what it does so I'm hoping for the value 6 to come out of it and we've got 6 now I'm going to look at the this task description and think of some corner cases so n and x are within the range of 1 to 100,000 so we know the array is not empty um, if I um, try a river of width one, each element is within a sensible range. And if we don't get there, we return minus one. I think everything's covered, so I'm just going to try a river of width one. And we'll just put one array one and we want the one to come out of it. Zero came out of it. Now that's right because is that right? One, two, four, five, six. I think that's right. Now that is right because the first leaf that falls is considered to be at time zero. So it's really just the index of the array we're looking for. I don't think I'm even going to test it any further I think I'm just going to submit it I think that that's fairly simple of course you may have a more brief way of doing it I noticed in the comments in some of the last videos there's been some very uh, brief solutions like just one line of code or something if you could find something like that I would be interested to know um, 
I, I think I'm happy with my solution here. Uh, I need to just make sure it's indented right. Well, I don't, but I will. And let's run tests. Oh, an error hash set. Uh, right, of course, I need to import the hash set. And it's syntactically correct. I'm going to submit it and see if I get 100%. And 100%, so that's a nice uh, that's a nice result. Uh, what were the corner cases? Extreme frog never crosses the river. Random permutations, all leaves at the same place. Hmm. And then some performance tests with larger ranges, but we've managed to pass the performance and the correctness. So that's 100% for uh, frog jump one task, frog river one task. Okay, thanks for watching.